Beware the Ides of Moving. Yes, absolutely. That caught me off guard yesterday, actually. I had been focused in the morning for my open class, and then I left the screen for a few minutes to go do something else moving related, and I came back and I thought I saw something. And again, I, I hadn't enough context to really execute against it. And sure enough, it bit me a little bit. That happens. That's actually, we're going to talk about that a little bit in the uh, Dino, the Dino uh, philosophy psychology section, the second half. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, everybody. Dino's weekly recap, two parts. What happened this week? And um, some psychology. First part, what happened this week? Well, I've got you guys on my uh, context monitor, the one that's on my far left that I kind of, you know, as a scalper, I look at for reference, but I don't really trade off of any of these things. And I call your attention to the TPO views at the top. We are hanging on by fingernails in this range in ES and NQ and YM. And oddly, again, still, YM and RTY have the strongest range patterns, um, relatively holding the range. As you can see, RTY on the far left, YM over a bit. It's got some artifacts around, but it's more or less respecting its range. But boy, if you look at NQ, I'm going to blow NQ up for just a second. I mean, look at this. We went all the way up to the top here, and then we got rejected very, very, clearly up there, although we left some artifacts back down. And it, this is just exploration. There, you know, you, you can't stake out a claim here other than, you know, watching what might near, be nearby. And so it made for a little bit of a tricky week. Same thing in ES. It looked pretty much the same way. And um, so, you know, it's still the range is king and this range is hanging on by its fingernails for the bulls here. You know, it, it uh, during the overnight, we, we went down and almost touched, uh, let's see, how low did we get here? It looks like 24-ish. Uh, uh, let me see if that jives. What's, what's over? Yeah, 25, 24-ish. Um, anyway, and the point is, you know, it, it formed a nice symmetry overnight, and we're trading above that. So, you know, again, for now, it, it managed to hold on. There was some absorption at the low, 600 and change. 668. God, that, I thought that was going to be one of those 666 absorptions, but it's not right down there at the bottom. You can kind of see it. Anyway, 668. So, you know, I, the story hasn't changed. The market is fighting to hold on here. And, you know, the bottom goes, we could drop really hard. But as long as we're in this range, you know, it's going to zip back and forth. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I said last week, except that we're at a much weaker spot than we were at the end of last week. We've obviously traded down. We've rejected 4,100, uh, excuse me, 4,000 and 4,100 a couple of times have been rejected. So, so my general take here is, uh, you know, it continues to be a nimble market, a scalper's style market. You know, there's good setups across the board, but you got to be really nimble when you execute against them because they go away really fast. And um, beyond that, one thing I've noticed a couple of times this week, I'll just point it out today, where we will open relatively strong or relatively weak. In the case of this morning, we opened pretty weak. Um, on the internals, you know, we were minus 1,500 on the tick and minus 1,900 on the advanced decline, and it's kind of drifting back into balance. And we saw the same thing yesterday going the other way. We started kind of strong-ish and then just drifted down. So. You know, it's really, it would be really hard to argue that this is a market that's got any sense of which way it wants to go over the near term. And you know, Tesla got crushed on a really bad um, Tesla day or whatever they call it. Elon Musk continues to not impress me as he does. The more he does, the less impressive he gets. <laughs> and And what's really funny about that is he doesn't have a clue that that's going on. He thinks he's like still the cat's meow. It's mind boggling. Anyway, so yeah, very sad, very sad. Uh, anyway, so, you know, gosh, I hate to be a broken record, but, you know, this is just stay on your toes, wait very patiently for opportunities when they come, take them. You know, if you blink, you'll miss them. And, and you know, have in the back of your mind that if this market breaks down, it could get really ugly. And likewise, if it tries to break down and fails, it's going to step back into the range like it's done over and over. Look at the TPO and, uh, well, you know what? Let's see. Let's, rather than looking at the TPO, let's drag this over. This is just the two-minute with the uh, the daily. 
SDs of the VWAP. And this is what I mean. You know, you see these attempts to push down and when they don't get anywhere, they snap back pretty wicked. You know, this one snapping back off the initial balance low is pretty aggressive. So, you know, you just have to respect that. It's not like, you know, the bottom's going to fall out and all you have to do is get on board and get short. Likewise, you know, we've had a couple of really killer short squeezes and I expect that to continue. Um, it's real easy to get the shorts on their back foot under these conditions because all you have to do is, you know, get a, a good amount of momentum going down and then absorb it. And then, you know, everybody gets going that way and then you take it the other way. And, you know, some of that might have to do with the zero day um, option expiration thing that we've been talking about a lot lately. Some of it, I think, is just the nature of, of a bear market trying to hold on for dear life. I've, I've seen this behavior before. I've been frustrated by it before. It, it can be tricky to trade. The key to trading it well is to continually check your bias. This morning I traded really well, but I found I had a really strong short bias over and over again. And I kept having to push it away because, you know, the market made a, a, an attempt to go down and couldn't. I mean, you know, look at this NQ view here. And, um, you know, I had been shorting all morning before we opened and it had been really productive. And then we opened and, you know, the 15 minute break was to the upside and then it pulled back really sharply. There was a lot of action up here as it was figuring it out. And, and it still feels that way. So, you know, one of the things I'm finding to be really helpful, and it's going to be part of my my theme for part two here of the Dino session today, is routinely over and over again, every five minutes, check my bias whether I think I've got bias or not. I have a little note on my desk. As usual today, you know, check your bias because I'm, that's the only mistake you can make in these conditions is get too convinced we're going one way or the other and, and get too aggressive. And then all of a sudden you're just way off sides and you don't want to do that. Okay, anyway, uh, that's really all I have to say with respect to the, uh, the weekly recap. You know, if you're, if you're having a good week or you had a good week, keep doing what you're doing. This is a process-driven market. You have to really stay focused on your process. And uh, as I said at the beginning, I had one little loss of focus yesterday and it cost me a few hundred bucks in each account just because I, I wasn't paying attention. And it when, when you do that and the market decides to move suddenly when you're not paying attention, that's dangerous. So just make sure you're not over leveraged and that doesn't take you out of your account. And uh, and be prepared to be wrong. I don't know what else I would add to that, so I won't add anything to that. All right, let's uh, transition to phase two here. I have so many good Dino topic ideas, and um, and there's some of them that could go on a long time, and there's some that are kind of short and sweet. And as I'm packing boxes and getting ready to um, to move here. Uh, which for me is a relatively simple process because I'm a minimalist and I don't own a lot of stuff. Um, yesterday kind of reminded me when I had that little loss of focus for a minute and an otherwise pretty good week. Um, something that I've talked about in the boot camps, I've talked about it in the workshop in 2019. And it's the following, it, the importance of of, and I'm just gonna, you know, making up a little acronym here for it, you know, it, three R's, right? Rest, having rhythm and having a ritual. Um, yesterday reminded me of the importance of that. So let's start with rest. This is a hard one for traders, particularly if you are trying to juggle trading and something else, you know, a full-time job or a part-time job or a, a side gig that's paying your bills right now while you learn to trade, whatever it is. Um, rest can be tricky, and um, most of you know this because you've been around a little while in TRG, but some of you don't. Um, I'm, an, I'm an unusual person when it comes to sleeping. I am a polyphasic sleeper, which is something I've taught myself to do over about 20 years. What that means is I sleep in phases. I don't sleep in multiple phases. I, I don't sleep in um, one, you know, go to bed at X time and get up at X time every night. Uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, number one, just my lifestyle and the trading lifestyle. It, it's easier not to have to do that, number one. Number two, I, you know, I don't have a significant other with me all the time, so it's easy to do what I need to do. So that makes it useful. 
and it makes it more practical. It's hard to do when you have a significant other who's on a regular schedule. But what I mean by polyphasic sleeping is um, I sleep in two, three, sometimes four hour chunks at a time, and I do it a couple of times a day. So, you know, that's how I'm up in the middle of the night and trading. And then I, you know, I'll teach in the morning and then I'll take a crash nap for an hour or two and then I'll get back up and I'll do something else. And that works really well for me. And it also works uh, well for me to manage chronic pain, which is a, an ongoing problem for me with all of the things I've broken by racing motorized vehicles of various types. And so, um, so rest, you know, if, if you're the type that can do eight hours of sleep a night, you know, go to bed at the same time, get up at the same time, that's ideal. And, you know, and obviously if you have people around you that do that, it's easier to do that. And if you can't do that, learning to polyphasic sleep is a really good practice, but it, it, it takes work to learn how to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know a lot of people that do that sleep the way I do, but, um, but it really works for me. So, you know, what else can I say? The, the flip side of it is, if that doesn't work for you, you really have to focus on getting enough rest. Because if you're not rested in trading, it, it just will never work in the long run. You know, you can go for short periods of time and not get any sleep and live on coffee. We've all done that before. But you, you have to understand that the key to this game, it's a long game. And the key to surviving it is having enough rest. And then I'll get to the other two items, having a rhythm is also really important and having some sort of ritual i also find particularly for traders but for almost any endeavor i find that to be useful as well but i wanted to start with rest because that's just such a critical component and you know again when i wasn't able to get you know the eight hours of sleep or seven hours or six hours straight which every now and then i can do but it's rare um and you know, once I, I got to the point where I couldn't do that, I started learning how to polyphasic sleep and doing research on it. Interestingly, the whole go to bed and sleep for eight hours and get up thing is mostly a result of industrial and agricultural uh, revolutions and not so much in history. Humans have not slept in one burst like that for most of history. It's a relatively new thing. If you check it out, you'll you'll see there's some interesting stuff you can find about that if you do a little research. So anyway, um, get enough rest one way or another. If you're gonna try polyphasic sleep like I do, the best thing to do is to try it in two pieces to begin with. You know, sometimes I do it in four or five pieces in a day, you know, two hours times five, you know, I've done that a lot, but, but the most common thing for people is to sleep in two different bursts. And when I first started doing it, the way I did it was I like to stay up late. And at night, so that was a problem because I need to go to bed early to get up early. So what I would do is I'd try to crash in the afternoon, take a nap, sleep as long as I could. And when I woke up, I would get up and do something for a few hours. And that was often at like midnight, my time. And then I'd go back to sleep at 2 a.m. and get back up at 5 a.m. And, and that at first seemed really weird. But once I got used to doing it, um, I really like it because when I get up in the middle of the night, there's nobody around. It's dark. It's quiet. There's nothing going on in the world. And I'm really productive, whether I'm coding or, I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing, it's um, it's just a really good time to do focused work. And guess what? It's a good time to trade, too. So anyway, that's the rest piece. Um, rhythm. Rhythm and ritual go together. And I have talked about these two a lot in different um boot camp and workshop sessions, but the key to trading well is having a process. We say that over and over and over and over again. All right, having a process, what does that mean? Well, it means that you do things in some sort of sequence and you group them together somehow. You know, it's not always step one, step two, step three. Sometimes it's step one, two, and three all at once, but, um, but you have to get used to thinking in process and living in process. And the first part of that is having a process for every day. Get up, do the same thing over and over again. For me, I get up, I, I get my body capable of moving again because often in the morning it doesn't want to. And I exercise, work out somehow, and you know, then go through a mental checklist. Am I ready to trade? Cool, okay. And then I'm at my computer and then I have a ritual for whether I'm trading or not. For example, my context procedure that I go through, what's the context in the market um, would be the next step. So if, if you put things into boxes like that and chunk them up, 
so that you're always doing things in the same more or less sequence. Like, you know, if you have your trading room or your trading area, a part of your, you know, corner of your office or corner of your room, have it be, and this works really well for me, I, I don't enter that area unless I have done certain things like gotten my brain working, make sure I'm awake, am I competent to trade or am I, you know, emotional or angry or tired or, you know, sick or whatever, you know, and I always go through that list before I enter my trading area. That way I take it serious when I'm in the trading area. That's part of that ritual. And that ritual helps create the rhythm that you need. And, um, and I can't emphasize this enough, but it's really hard to explain. Most of you probably have some experience with this idea and, and the need for it. But for people that have no idea what I'm talking about, it's a really hard thing to explain in terms of trading. But if you think about anything else that you've ever done, you know, any sport you did, you know, how, how did you warm up for your sport? How'd you get your mind ready? You know, watching the Formula One drivers before the race is interesting. You know, obviously they stretch and warm up and they also do these like reaction exercises with their with their coaches. Their, their, um, I forget what they call them. Their physical or P, PAs, I guess, P, P, P something. So anyway, um, and, you know, like uh, uh, dropping a ball exercise where the, the driver has to catch the ball and the, um, the coach trainer person is dropping it and, and, and changing hands and you know, just getting your brain online and getting it wired to what's happening right now and getting it in the mode to drive a Formula One car, which requires really fast reactions. And, you know, they stretch their necks out real well because you know, the, the amount of abuse your neck takes in a turn, you know, there's four or five G-forces when it's normal. And if you crash, there might be 50. And, you know, that's really hard on your neck. Most drivers that are killed are killed from broken necks and that's why they wear that protective device around their neck and so if you think about that and adapt it back to trading you know what things do you need to do to get the rhythm of trading going if you've watched in the pit i frequently post uh warming up with scalping micros that's how i warm up i will sit down and i'll get the context done what's the market doing okay i got it now um i'll get in and i'll do a couple of trades with a micro just to get my brain thinking in terms of risk reward and just to get an idea what the market feels like. And I'll put a limit order up someplace that I think, you know, is a little bit out of the current range and see if it fills. And I'll just kind of probe around and, and warm up. And if it, I get it wrong, I get flat right away. And if I'm getting it right, I don't read too much into it because again, I'm just warming up. And that's part of the ritual. If I don't do that, if I just come in and immediately try to trade, you know, full tilt, full size, right at the open, you know, I always screw it up because my brain's just not in that mode yet. I haven't gone through the ritual to get my rhythm there yet. And that's so important. So, um, you know, I, I wish I could give you a lot of really good suggestions how to do this. I, I've gone through a couple that I do. Um, when I was a little younger, I used to find that running um, before I, the market opened was a really good thing to do. You know, here it's dark and it's kind of rural. It's a little hard to do that. But if you live anywhere in the city, even just going for a really brisk walk, just, you know, really get your brain awake. There's infinite numbers of studies that show a five minute brisk walk will make you much better at making decisions. And, you know, other things you've heard me talk about. I'll run my stairs. I live in a house that has two stories right now and the kitchen's right above me and the and the office is right below it. So I'll just go up and down the stairs 20 times. And, you know, if it's raining or snowing out or whatever, lately we had snow on the beach. So, um, so you have to set that up and don't just do it when you feel like it. And don't just do it by accident. I literally used to have a piece of paper I kept next to my bed. When I got out of bed, I would check off the boxes before I headed into my trading room, where I continued to check off boxes to make sure I was following the rhythm and the ritual to get my mind and my body where it needed to be to trade. You know, one of the things that totally escaped me when I first started trading is that you have to be physically in good shape to be a good trader. You're, you, 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 it takes endurance. You know, if you're really out of shape and, and, you know, have real bad physical problems, you can still be a trader, but you know, those are going to affect you. And 
So you, you have to train to trade. And that's weird, but it's true because the better you feel physically, the better your mental acuity is going to be. And then you're going to make better decisions. And trading is about making decisions as hard as we try to make it not. You know, we try to make process and we try to automate whatever things we can. If we can automate execution, great. You know, all those things we do to try to make it less you know, human being pressing buttons, but you still have to be competent when you're there to do that. And, um, you know, so many people believe that all you need is, oh, you, I just need the right indicator. I just need the right system and I can be profitable. Guess what? That's only step one. And it's not an indicator. It's usually um, not, but we'll, we'll skip that topic for now and just focus on assuming you have an edge. The next problem you're going to have is staying competent and focused while you're in your edge. And that will be a whole lot harder than you think it is if you're not there yet. You have to respect that. Davy C says there are mobile alarm apps that will not turn off until you complete certain tasks. Yes, absolutely. There's, there's all kinds of procedure apps too. There's one called Process Street that lets you build little online processes. And uh, I did that when I first started working out my different methodologies over and over again, I use those things and I'm a big proponent of them. Finding and developing your ritual and your rhythm is something you really have to spend time thinking about and, and really attack it. Um, it's important. And again, the reason I decided to talk about it today was, you know, a lot of people are getting funded and then they're figuring out how hard it is to stay funded or to get to withdrawal. And guess what? You know, th that has to be a psychological problem because you managed to pass the evals just fine. So you have to figure out what that's about. And one of the ways like we talked about in a previous Dino, is be prepared to handle boredom. Boredom can really be your worst enemy. And part of handling boredom is having, guess what? A ritual and a rhythm so that your, your boredom doesn't take control and you don't do stupid things or you don't just make a mistake. You know, sometimes it's not that the monkey comes out. It's just that, you know, you're 70% focused instead of 99% focused and you make an error. And errors are costly in our business. I don't know any other business, and I've said this over and over again, but I want to exaggerate it a bit. I don't know any other business but ours where you can come home at the end of a hard day of work with less money than you started with. And I also don't know any other business where you can be successful for nine months and ruin everything in one day and one trade for the whole year. I've seen people do that. I have done it. And the way you avoid that, and trust me, if you haven't done it, you you will. Um, it, hopefully not catastrophically, but we all make mistakes like that. And the trick to avoiding them is number one, you know, your brain needs rest, give it to it, however you can make that work. And, and importantly, find a way of just doing the same things over and over again in some sort of ritual. You know, human beings and ritual goes back as far as our history does. You know, there's religious rituals, there's cultural rituals. And you need to create trading rituals for yourself, which could be a lot of different things. You know, interacting with other traders can be part of it. It's a ritual for me on Mondays to talk to the hedge fund guys. And we all have that ritual, all the people in that group, because we all kind of just get centered from it. That's why we started doing it. You know, nobody's giving each other trades. And, you know, the guy at Goldman isn't telling everybody what Goldman's doing. You know, we're just chit-chatting and getting a sense of what, what today feels like at the beginning of the week when we do that. And, and that's part of a ritual. When I don't do it, I miss it. And I'm less successful the weeks that I miss it because it just, it keeps me from being as centered. And uh, meditating is really, really powerful. If you have any experience with that, uh, really, really good way to, to uh, cap your ritual, um, you know, get out of bed, go through your checklist and at least have some period of meditation before you start trading just to get your mind on what you should be doing and not whatever you're thinking about, which will always distract you, whether it's your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your dog, your bank book, your taxes, your house, your roof leaking, the weather, whatever it is, there will always be something. And, you know, think about your job. You can go in and park in your parking space and go into the office and sit in your office and you can do nothing and be competent at it at a regular job. That's what most people do all day is variances of nothing. But in trading, 
if you're sitting on your hands doing nothing, it should be deliberate. That should be a decision you're making because of the conditions or because of your competence or lack of competence. And then when you're trading, you should be very procedural. Um, you often hear me say, um, I think in binaries, like right now, NQ is trading at six. I have no trade here. If it gets up to 20, I'm interested in a short again. I've been short up there a few times. 20 to 30, I like. There's a binary. So I'm thinking in bets. I'm thinking up there. That looks like an interesting trade. Um, you can see over here, there's some stuff up there we could clean up in the process. We had a weak break um, in my view, you know, not clinically, but we, we didn't get very far above the initial balance when we traded back into the range. And so, you know, until further notice, I fade conditions like that. So again, I'm getting my brain ready for it. And then when it happens, I'll just react. I don't have to think about it. And and that's really the key to long-term success. And, and, and if you haven't already figured out this is a long-term game, that's the first thing you need to embrace because all of these different topics we have are about surviving the long-term game. Um, Anthony Cradelli said something, well, he says it a lot, but he said it recently again in one of his tweets, and I, I just so agree with this, that most really successful traders do trading because they really couldn't do anything else well, and uh, or at that level anyway. And I think that's funny, but it's true. You know, we're a weird bunch, the trading crowd. And, you know, to get good at this, you have to, we all have quirks that might make us better at some parts of it, but we have to keep them under control when they can um, potentially be catastrophic. And again, the key to that over and over and over again is process. And the key to staying in your process is to be rested and have a, a ritual of some kind that's the same thing you do every day. And then, you know, what you'll find, I find this all the time, even on the days I am a little tired and or I don't feel well, I often trade better because my brain's not working and I'm just following my process. And I find some of those days are the most productive. And again, that's complete opposite of what it's like in, in the nine to five world, in the employment world, where, you know, if you go in and you just gel in your seat for eight hours, nothing gets done. Well, sometimes gelling in your seat and just letting the market do what it does and going with it or fading it at the appropriate spots pays off. And again, it's just our game is so different than everything else out there. And so, you know, all the conventional wisdom about success is probably not going to apply to trading. And and all the things that, that people do um, in teams, in corporations are going to be the exact opposite because you're the only person playing here. It's you in the market. And, and so you, if you're not spending a lot of time thinking about things like this, um, as your trading skills develop, then you need to be. And that's why I keep um, bringing these topics up and repeating them over and over again, because th those are the key between success and failure. And I've succeeded and I've failed, and I know what causes one and what causes the other. And a lack of rhythm, a lack of ritual causes me to be less productive as a trader. And if I'm not rested, it, you know, that screws up everything in life. You make bad decisions emotionally. It's bad for you in general. So you really have to focus on that. You know, you, your your mental health is the most important thing you have as a trader. And, and it's closely linked to your physical health, obviously. We're almost at that spot. I generally don't talk about trades here in this particular session, but it's getting interesting up here at the top of the range. Just for the record. Anyway, I see some comments. So let me go over and read some of the comments. We're coming to the bottom of the hour and we'll see where we go from there. Let's see. Todd says, I made exactly the mistake you mentioned this morning. Perfect setup with the wrong instrument. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yep, I, I've done that before too. That's why I literally, yep, mistake proof all your setups. That's why mine are different colors. The um, if you if you've noticed on my here, let me put my main screen back up uh, or put it up. I haven't had it up yet for this session. That is exactly why the minis are in tan and my micros that I trade are in this green. And uh, at the moment, that's not true for YM and RTY on the far right, but I'm not trading those. But that way, I just can't make a mistake and be an NQ and meant to be an MNQ or vice versa. And that is so important. And it, again, it's a simple little ritual. And it's a simple little part of your procedure. And once you set it up, you'll never make that mistake again. But boy, once you make it and blow an account, you know, cash 
PA or otherwise, you know, you learn your lesson and you just make sure it's there. And yeah, JVC said, we've all made that mistake. Every J, Lee, Lee has made that mistake. JVC's made it. I've made it. I don't know anybody that hasn't made that mistake. Yep. David said the same thing. Um, let's see. Huge aha, how I prepped for, prepared for a bad day and then prepared for the day after. Oh, totally, totally, totally. Yep. And, and that's the only difference. Isn't that mind blowing? You know, this seems like, how hard could this be? Remember my, my two neurosurgeons that paid me a lot of money to coach them down in the desert? You know, how hard could this be? Hey, guess what? You know, if you've made a 10, 20 million as a neurosurgeon, you can piss away 10% of it really fast in a couple of weeks as a trader. And it's harder than neurosurgery. I, hearing them finally admit that was pretty interesting. It wasn't that it was a more difficult thing to do. It's that when you're in somebody's brains, your emotions aren't constantly telling you you're doing the wrong thing like they do in trading. And, um, you know, it took near two neurosurgeons almost two years to figure that out. So there's a really important lesson in that. OK, so anyway, good comments. Um, I know you can all identify <clears throat> my homework assignment to all of you as a Dino as a dinosaur is really take a step back and force yourself to do this. Even if you say, well, I kind of do this already, but I don't completely, or yeah, meaning to do that. Sit down and write the stuff down. What do I do when I get up before I go into my trading room? To be competent to trade, what do I do? How much rest do I need to have? What's the ritual I go through? What's my procedure? And um, once you start doing that day in and out, you'll, you'll start to get that rhythm and you know, then it just becomes second nature to, to, to just trade whatever's happening or sit on your hands. It becomes automatic. And then the, the warnings that I gave you last week about being bored come into play right there. Ooh, we have a very interesting setup right now. We're pushing up into a very interesting spot. Anyway, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave Dino here since I have a lot of packing to do and um, and staging, actually, of my boxes, getting it ready for the big run up to the Pacific Northwest, which will probably be Sunday. So are there any questions or comments or anything? I, I, I made this one purposely kind of short, but you know, I love to use kind of mnemonics, rest, rhythm, and ritual. You know, that's kind of the key to consistency in my, in my view and in my experience. And you know, that's true in anything. I mean, if you ask Lewis Hamilton that about his Formula One career, he'll tell you the same thing. Um, and uh, I think that's true being a, an excellent performer in anything. I really do. So anyway, um, if there are any comments, stick them in the chat. I'll wait for a minute. Otherwise, we will wrap up in a couple of minutes here. JVC, if you'd like to add anything, feel free. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> nothing on this particular. Actually, am I unmuted? Hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're good. We I, can oh, okay, great. Uh, cool. Uh, so yeah, I uh, don't have anything specific to add on this topic. Good stuff as always. Um, tomorrow, just mention this because it's something that we haven't formally done before, but I'm doing a Sierra chart tips and tricks session, which uh, my my list of tips and tricks is just stupidly long, way, way, way longer than I can possibly do in one or even two or possibly three sittings. Um, but I'm going to start working through it with you guys. So all you Sierra junkies or maybe want to be Sierra junkies, uh, come along and I'm going to start with the, the simpler stuff stuff and you know shortcuts and and workflow enhancers things like that and then we'll gradually work our way into some some deeper more complex uh fun stuff so well cool. hey for I've, that i have been to a couple of sessions jvc has done on ticks and trips in sierra they're always very enlightening so i i highly recommend this topic there's myriad stuff there that i never knew yep. and he knows most of them so there's about uh, seventeen thousand different ways to do everything in sierra and most of right. them will make no sense whatsoever until you know them so right. <laughs> and then once you do know them they'll save you yeah. a lot of time yeah, that's as, great yeah you know, but oh my god getting there all is right. all the fun cool um all righty guys so uh thank you thank you for the uh the nice comments everybody we will have see a good you. move happy birthday Yes, happy thank early you. birthday. Yeah, my big birthday. Uh, what an old fart. Sunday. Happy, yep. happy trader is born day. That's right. Exactly. 50 years of trading as of Sunday. How about that? <laughs> you traded on a Sunday, your first day. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it actually wasn't. My birthday was a weekday because I literally went with my dad down to the Dean Witter office to open my mm -hmm. account and that day. It was like. Did you place a trade that day too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was all right. Really? Yeah. I, I bought I bought options in ComSat. 
a company called oh, on that same satellite. day wow yep oh i had been planning that trade for like six months it was like you know <laughs> it was a big deal yeah it was a real big very deal. cool very cool big coming of age yes all right everybody have a good one we will uh talk to you soon hopefully um everything goes smoothly and i'm up and running uh, mid next week i will uh, i'll be in touch looking forward <laughs> to right. it Thanks have a good rest of your day everybody Bye-bye. see ya Bye-bye.